I've, I've kept Ludovic for the end of the day because I was sure that everybody is going to be happy and, fun and have fun. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be interesting, but it's going to be fun, I'm sure. <laughs> so Ludovic, uh, or Yuzul, works in the Mozilla Operations Center. He is a member of the team that makes sure the Mozilla servers are working all the time. They are not working all the time, but... And he is also responsible for testing Thunderbird releases. So he's going to tell you who, what's happening with Thunderbird now. Please welcome Ludovic. So I've been lazy. The presentation is probably going to be very quick. I'm just going to state a few facts, um, say what's been going on, what's the plan with a few things, and then I'll try to have a long open session. So if uh, open question sessions. So if you have a lot of questions, write them down. I'll try to answer them as much as I can. Crappy questions are welcome. Shitty questions are welcome. Uh, everything that's on your mind, just ask. I'll probably answer, even if I can't. Um, so the first thing I want to say is, um, I don't know if you guys have been following, but Thunderbird went uh, into maintenance mode a year ago, in November 2012 was the last release done by a complete Mozilla team. Since then, the people that were working on that team have been reassigned to other things. Some of them have kept a bit of time to work on Thunderbird. So the latest release that came out, uh, was it a month, two months ago, was done mostly and only by volunteers. And as you can see on that contribution graph, that's, I'll give the source later, but that's the contribution graph to um, Mozilla Thunderbird over the years in terms of comments. Uh, 2008 is when uh, Mozilla messaging was created, version 3 in the works, and since then we've kept it quite high and it's not going that, that low. Same thing goes for the number of users we have, and so that's quite good news. Um, so I'm going to, and um, my talk is going to be about development, support, QA, all the things that you need in an organization or in, in a project to uh, deliver a great product to your users. So um, the first thing we got rid of is the ESR branch. Uh, between version 17 and version 24, we maintain two versions of Thunderbird. So double the work for releases, double the work for QA, double the work for blah, blah, blah. Um, the hope, the initial plan was like, oh yeah, yeah. There's going to be some guy who's going to come up with a so great feature that we're going to have to release something between 17 and 24 but we don't want to disturb our enterprise user, so we'll keep something special for them. 24 arrived, and then we realized, oh, it's been a year almost already. What came in? Oh, no big, big features, so we don't really need that thing, so we killed it. So now everybody using Thunderbird uses the same version, except if you're using beta uh, and nightlies, but I'm pretty sure there's not so many people, and I'll come to that later. So um, I'm going to start. It's I'm not going to start in the order that's in there. The important thing that are happening right now is around chat, because chat, most of the code is borrowed from uh, another project that's called Instantbird. And Instantbird is uh, now hosting everything inside uh, Mozilla Central. The bugs are in Bugzilla, the same Bugzilla. So uh, integration goes way faster, way easier for them. So, and it's the area in Thunderbird in the last year that got the most fixes, the most patches, and that's the most worked on because they have a great community working for that and we get that for free. Well, almost for free. There's a few commits once in a while, so uh, thanks, thanks to them. The um, other thing that we're working on right now is rewriting the, uh, uh, the, MIME, the MIME decoder. So for those who don't know, an email is made of headers and then uh, a body. And then in the body, you're supposed to only have text. Uh, but uh, most of the emails you receive these days contain HTML, images, attachments, um, and so forth. To get these, uh, you encode everything that you attach in your email or everything that's not plain text in your email with something called MIME. MIME is defined in four RFCs, uh, but it's loosely defined. So it's uh, implemented all over the world in different it's been, it's been implemented over time and in various clients that are sending stuff through email. And it's really not 
the code we have is a, is a kind of uh, is a kind of spaghetti that nobody really understands how it works, except one guy. He started. He decided like, oh, I don't want this spaghetti anymore, and I want to be able to I want to be able to get more. I want to, I want to get the better code, and I want some code that's going to be able to be used by other projects. So he said, let's teach the C++ thing that does that for us right now and write it in GS. Uh, we have plenty of test cases already. Let's, sh let's make sure they are, pass they are passing. So right now, the big, the big thing that's going to happen for the next version of Thunderbird is the way we handle uh, email messages. But for the user, it's not going to change anything. The second thing that we would like to, to have in version 31 is a better way to deal with uh, your contacts and your address book. Same thing, the address book code is probably from 1999, the one that we're using right now. So not up to date, and then every time we want to add something, it's like, okay, let's throw this. Oh, is it sticky? Yeah, it's sticky, good. Let's keep it that way. Oh, oh, it's sticky again, yay. So you end up with a bubble, and then stick, stick, sticks of bubbles around. And oh, another can of spaghetti. So um, we're rewriting that with a, with a, with a way to be open to be open and extensible, uh, meaning that um, we're going to have a core, and then you'll have plugin. One plugin will be able to do uh, cardav, another will be able to read CSV file, another will be able to import LD file. Um, again, for you, it's not going to change anything in the product. And initially, I think the only thing we want to implement is the core thing without any plugin inside. And at the pace things are going, it's not going to happen much, much, much. And the last thing that we're seeing a lot is bug fixes, and that's really good. So we are not seeing new features in Thunderbird. So you're not being, oh, my UE is completely changed. Oh, good. The only thing you're seeing is like bug fixes here, bug fixes there. And once in a while, yes, we do change the UI, but it's most, mostly what's getting in right now is bug fixes. So, and it's old bugs, like old bugs, very old bugs. So it's kind of good. Development is something that's thriving right now. But again, if you guys want to spend some time, we'll welcome you. Place to come is dash mail dev in, on irc.mozilla.org. Um, where else can they go? Probably the TB planning mailing list. Um, support. So right now, we're using Get Satisfaction for support. We have a thriving community there. And um, the issue is that some of the stuff we do, we need to reference to normal Firefox or the code base that we share with Firefox. And it's difficult if you're a Firefox uh, support personnel or someone who does support for Firefox to switch to the tools we have. Same in the other way around. So we've been, wait, we've been working on that for the last two years, getting the support that we use into the normal Sumomo thingies that is used for Firefox. That's going to happen in the next not happen yet, but it's happening in the next six months. So we'll have a uh, unified tool for support for Thunderbird and Firefox. Woo Waiting for that for a very, very long time. Ooh, now my part, quality. Um, let's say not much is going there because I really don't have time. And the two or three contributors that, are, that have been active there, they're still doing their job. Uh, it's just that uh, we lost one person full time, which was me. So the... Um, the th and the other thing that we're missing compared to Firefox, for instance, uh, Firefox has up to 5% of their users that are using beta. We have 0.43% of our users using beta. Uh, and that really makes a big difference. Really, really makes a big difference. Because um, it's really rare these days for Firefox to discover issues when they release. For Thunderbird, every time we release, there's like, oh yeah, this antivirus thingy that half our users use is broken with a new version and we only see it on the day we release. So um, I've been running, I'm not asking you to run lightly for that. I'm just asking more people on beta, not asking to be. Run beta. You download it? Can, it? Huh? Can I just ask to get it? Uh, yes, if you are on Ubuntu, there's a PPA for that. You can even run lightly. So. Uh, and I've been running Nightly for 2009, for six years, and I never lost an email. So, hmm? <laughs> well, I've lost emails about the NSA, about Echelon, about a few things, but uh, it's been pretty stable in terms of what, 
I've seen. But your mileage may vary. Uh, that, that was for quality. So yeah, quality, I would, my objective for this year is to double the number of users we have on beta. Still don't know how I'm going to tackle that. But having more people, uh, and especially on Windows, because 90% uh, of our users on Windows, and they, I don't know why, on other systems, people just run Thunderbird. But on Windows, they run Thunderbird. And then they install this application that adds another spam filter and then an antivirus thingy in, the, in, the, in, in, in Thunderbird. And that, that breaks things. Unfortunately for us, the people that are providing these oh, already, uh, <laughs> the people that are providing these tools, they don't provide, they don't do QA with their products. They're just expecting our product to continue working the way it used to. Um, so marketing, uh, it took us three months to get the keys to Atmos Thunderbird and the Facebook page we have. So we now have two people that are supposed to be actively doing marketing for Thunderbird, which means promoting add-ons, uh, promoting new releases and beta. And it's starting slowly to come here. So if you want to follow what's going on, this is the uh, Twitter account you should follow. That's the sources of the graphs I, show, I showed before. Uh, we have a bi-weekly bi meeting on Tuesdays at 9 uh, CET where we talk about stuff and where we're going, where we're going, how we're going to do it. And we discuss everything openly on that mailing list. So if you want to follow, uh, subscribe to that, send message questions, we'll answer. And come to the meeting and just listen. It's kind of interesting. Uh, questions? What? Oh yeah, I need to wait for the mic. Hello, uh, just a quick suggestion about your beta testing program. Perhaps you could get more people involved if there was a way through the interface to check, uh, start installing the beta versions some way that's, that's easier than asking people to download and install a different uh, kind of parallel mail program, especially for Windows users. That's my suggestion. And, and a question is, for the last couple of years, I've kind of uh, felt that Thunderbird is sort of limping towards the grave. And I'm wondering, seeing your presentation today, it, it, it kind of reinforces that notion. And I'm wondering why you feel that Thunderbird is getting a lot less attention, a lot less resources, a lot less everything than uh, other projects at Mozilla. Oh, une question comme je les aime. Putain, ça va être dur. <laughs> um, so um, there's something that has been lacking for a very long time with the project is a vision to where the project needs to go. Right now, this, we still don't have that. We don't, we don't have a roadmap. We don't have, because we're unable to make a roadmap. Uh, so once you, don't have, once you don't know where you're going, it's difficult to concentrate on going there. Um, technical stuff that we're doing right now are good, but they're not, they're not giving you a clear direction of, um, of why and where you're, you want to go. And the other thing is, um, it's about usage and who uses the program. And if you look at that, it's mostly people in Europe, while most of the project is governed outside of Europe. And, uh, and that has a very different vision, a very, very um, different vision of where email is going to go. Some people, I've spoken to some people who think email is dead, um, that email is only webmail, that you shouldn't bother just having email on your laptop. When you have that kind of discussion, after that, it's really, really difficult to, to set a vision for the product that does exactly the contrary of some of the, the vision that's, that's around and where people should be pushing the thing. Was that clear? I didn't like it, but yes, it was clear. <laughs> You're not the only one who doesn't like it. Other questions? All right. Hello. Um, can you give any advice on what you would tell uh, an NGO organization that um, whose head of IT has said, okay, we're going to use Outlook and Internet Explorer? Any advice on the arguments you would use? I, know I have some, but I would be so, good to get your advice. The first one I would go for is total cost of ownership. You need to pay licenses for all of that. Uh, you don't need licenses for the products we have. That's once. Uh, do you want to answer that one? You, it's a question? 
Okay. Uh, so that's that's the first one. The second one is um, the day uh, Mozilla says we are not going to fund anything anymore for Thunderbird. Well, you can say, rats, I don't give a shit. I have the source code. I can compile it myself and use it myself. That's the second one. Uh, and then it depends what the NGO does, right? So you can it, audit the code and say, we don't have backdoor sending any free emails to the NSA, for instance. So maybe I should give it a little bit more. It's a, a human rights defending organization. And the argument was, um, you know, we have no idea what's happening with Thunderbird, dot, 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 kind of to uh, the question that the person said earlier. But okay. thank you. Yeah. Derv? Yeah, so, well, the guy with the long hair first, because I don't know him. What about Enic mail and uh, mail encryption overall? Wouldn't that be a good reason to use it? Well, you can use PGP, right, with, uh, with Windows, and you get the same thing. Yeah, I, I mean, just um, speaking about um, Outlook, is there PGP for Outlook? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> PGP is a commercial product for Windows. So, um, before, before I came to this presentation, I was at another presentation in another room uh, where the guy from MailPile, who have oh, just released an alpha today, um, and he seemed very excited about the future of email. And he talked about um, making, one of his key things was making email uh, encrypted um, by default uh, and doing SMTP over Tor so that you could, uh, you know, your mail pile could receive email yeah. over Tor and therefore, you know, no one could see from the metadata who things were going and all sorts of interesting ideas for the future of email. Um, and I don't think, I don't think email is dead, and I think that... Um, okay, that wasn't my opinion, right? Sorry? You got that it wasn't my opinion, that I, when I said yeah, 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 I know, I know. But w I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is that there is excitement in the email space, um, and if Thunderbird is to thrive, it needs to capture some of that. If it doesn't capture some of that, then what will happen, it will continue being the same for the next however long it is. And actually, to be honest, that might well be suitable for the NGO. You know, if you want a product that isn't going to change on you for five years, Thunderbird may well be it, it under the current development, right? A lot of enterprises want that kind of thing. Uh, you know, you could argue email is stable, the protocols don't change, it just keeps working, right? But if, if Thunderbird wants to do new things, then there's excitement out there and the things that people are excited to do, but we have to demonstrate to people that we're the place where they're going to happen. Thank you. What are you doing Tuesday? <laughs> At nine. Oh, eight BST. Uh, for the NGO, it could be interesting too that um, Outlook is, has a risk of vendor looking. If you use Outlook, a few months later you have Exchange. And this is not only the license for Outlook, but for other things too. So if the vendor looking doesn't, if the NGO doesn't want to log in into this specific company, then they should use Thunderbird. Uh, there's one more question in the front. Oh, well, there too. But in the front too. Yeah, Mike's coming. Okay, thank you. The thing is, I work in a company where uh, they own Microsoft, and I'm still mm -hmm. one of the guys who want to use the Linux, and mm -hmm. I don't care of Windows. And so they are using Exchange. And when I had to configure my Thunderbird to work with Exchange, it was like a pain in the ass, really. Uh, so because of the, my calendar, I had to find the add-ons and for my mm -hmm. contact when I wanted mm -hmm. to uh, uh, SSL mm -hmm. to work, mm -hmm. uh, it never worked, so it's plain text mm -hmm. uh, because I need my contacts, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of these things and my calendar doesn't sync correctly, so even mm -hmm. when... So the idea is, you, you said the email is not dead, but then... Uh, why don't you make an effort try to work better with Microsoft? As you know, it's... Uh, Give me the MAPI specification and maybe and the required time to implement it and then we'll do it. Well, uh, it's been available for two years. And we didn't have the time for the last two years. With a proper license? <laughs>
Vas-y. Uh... So how much of the work going into kind of rewriting so that things are more modular in the core is going to affect things like Lightning and like the core add-ons that people are using? Is it going to make any real difference to them or? No. <laughs> um, so that contribution graph that you had, that was for Com Central or was that the combination? Com Central. Okay. How much of Thunderbird depends on the common code that's in Mozilla Central? Um, so we rely on the Gecko, Neko, NSPR, uh, NSS, uh, blah, 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 and uh, the uh, Xul and the Xul interpreter. So everything besides the UI. Mostly everything besides the UI because. Yeah. So we rely on the rest except the UI that builds Firefox. There's one more question in the second row. Oh, um, you said that uh, Thunderbird uh, at the moment doesn't have a roadmap. What's actually blocking you from creating one? Uh, <laughs> politics. <laughs> it's not in the mindset of people. Actually, we do have a roadmap. The roadmap right now is to have GSMIME and Ensemble ready for 31, which for people that are using the product is going to make no change. Because for them, the way we parse message internally doesn't change the way they're reading their emails. Uh, the way that we're probably going to start integrating with other contact stuff uh, until, we pro until we provide contract, um, uh, contact connectors is not going to affect the way they use the product on a daily basis. So we do have a roadmap, but it's like um, the roadmap we have is more like towards fixing stuff that we should have fixed long ago. But at the same time, uh, like you were saying about MailPile, uh, there is there is movement on, in UI on the on UI level too. Um, you know, people are kind of got used to the Gmail interface, got used to a whole bunch of things. I'm sure there's a lot of things that could happen. We are open. We're not closed. Hmm. It's just we need someone who wants to do that. And we currently don't have that. So it's the just people that the, No, no, the people we have that are excited right now, inside the team are people that want to um, work on the low-level stuff. The only part that has people excited about the UI right now is the chat people. They're all excited about UI. Very, very excited about UI. And they're making changes and they're listening to their users. Uh, the other thing that, the, and the, the reason we have that mindset also about not changing the UI is because the few times we tried, we tried a few times. Uh, version 3, or it's just 3.1, version 4. We try changing. Every time we change something, we get like, woo, uh -huh. and then, ah! <laughs> So it's very, very difficult to make changes that, be oh, we need to. Yeah, sorry. Oh, c'est pas grave. So thank you for attending.